Bill, I've got a problem with the uh, brake emergency light coming on. The little red one on the dash. Let's see what we can do about it. This is an 08 F-150. I've got the uh, instrument panel exposed here. And you can see those are the Those are the connectors on top. That's the one on the left. This is the one on the right. Okay, we're going to crank it up and see what happens. Alright, she's running. And uh, look what's on the instrument panel. Well, there's my seatbelt light because I'm not wearing my seatbelt. And here's the brake light. The brake is up, so that's not a problem. But watch when I wiggle the connector up top. Whoop! When I whoop whoop out and on. So when I wiggle the connector, all right. Now that can mean only. Well, it can mean several things. First of all, it can mean that the wires are broken somewhere, and they're not. It could also mean the wires are not crimped into the connector very well. And I don't think that's the case. It could also mean that the connector itself doesn't have enough... Uh, 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 the pins are not, con are not connected uh, properly. Like as if the female portion of the connector has been enlarged and it doesn't make good contact. It could also mean that the connector on the instrument panel board itself, the instrument cluster board, uh, could have bad solder joints. So one of those. Um, one of the things you want to check, I want to check the looseness of the pins and I'm going to show you how to do it. All right, I've disconnected the battery, and to uh, remove this connector right here, we push down the little tab, we pull the lever back, and voila, it just comes right out. Now, to check on the tightness of the pins, I want you to take a piece of number 18 solid copper, and I want you to insert it down into each one of the slots and feel for resistance. Remember, don't do this with the battery connected. <laughs> you, don't, you don't want to cause any more problems than you've already got. I want you to push down inside and feel and make sure that you have the same amount of resistance on each one of the pins um, that they're all pretty well, pretty well equal. If you find one that's kind of loose, I'm going to show you how to fix that. You, you'll have to disassemble the uh, the connector and uh, pull the pin out. It's not that hard to do. So I have um, I have one that I removed from a junk vehicle uh, on the bench, and uh, we'll use that one to show you how to pull the uh, the female pins out if you need to do that. And there's a way to tighten the pin up. Okay, uh, once that's done, if you find that there's a loose pin there, then uh, you can fix it. But if you're still having the problem, uh, you're going to have to get into the cluster most likely and do some soldering in there. Uh, there are lots of YouTube videos on how to do that. So... Um, I'm going to go ahead and test this one with the number 18 solid copper wire. And uh, after that, we'll go to the bench and we'll show you how to disassemble this thing and get each pin out and tighten it up if necessary. Now, one thing to note is <clears throat> not every place in these connectors have a pin. So in the big connector, there are no pins. In uh, space number 17, 19 through 23, 25, and 30. 
those are vacant pins. Uh, that's just in the header only. It's, the board has all its pins, but the uh, the connector up top that has all the wires attached, those are the ones that have missing pins. The small connector on the right side, uh, pin number 1, number 4, and 10 through 14 are not there. As I say, on the board, uh, the board actually has all of the uh, all of the pins soldered to it. It's just the connector is missing these pins. All right, uh, you should never have to take one of these apart unless you have a disaster with one of the uh, one of the mating pins inside this uh, connector. Now I've removed the uh, uh, the connector out of the shell. <coughs> uh, pretty easy to do. Uh, I'm going to show you how. Okay, we're on the bench. Uh, this is a test setup that I have. This is the correct connector for the uh, for the Ford F-150 uh, year 08. Just the same as the connector we showed you uh, inside the vehicle. All right, uh, I've I've slid this uh, insert out. This this thing has all the pins. You can pull it out. It has a release tab, and uh, the release tab is on the side right there. You can see the release tab. That's the only thing that holds it in. To release it, uh, what you do is uh, you have to put something in this little slot and prise up, and that will pull the tab back and allow you to slide the insides of it out. Okay. These pins are actually easy to get out. If you look at the end, I don't know if we're going to be able to focus on this very well. If you look at the end, there's a little plastic piece that you can actually push out right here. So if you want to pull a pin out, Push that up to release the pin. Well, I'm trying. <laughs> Let's see. Let me get a little closer look here. Yeah, that one's a little stubborn. Let's try the one next to it. Okay, that one came out without any uh, problem. Now, if you look down inside, I don't know how we're going to do this. These things are so small. If I can make my camera focus. If you look down inside here, yeah, get the camera to focus again. You can see a little a little finger. That puts pressure on the pin. If you take a small screwdriver or something and push that down enough to uh, uh, enough to uh, cause it to bend, it will actually compress the pin inside or the socket inside. This is the female part. You don't want to push it down too far because it'll make it very hard to push onto the uh, the pin on the other end of the connector. And you only want to do this if one of these pins is loose and doesn't have any friction to it. And as I said, you can always test it with the number 18 wire. That number 18 copper wire should go in with friction, pull out with friction. You should be able to freely do that as I'm doing here. If it uh, doesn't have any friction to it and you've got a bad pin, so what you do, 
uh, come on, focus. What you have to do is pin that down with a little screwdriver a little bit, and then look at the end and make sure you haven't compressed it all the way down. If you have, then you're going to have to stick something in there and uh, relieve it. Okay, that's how you get the pins out of the out of here. Each one is the same way. Uh, don't do it unless you have problems uh, with the actual connector itself. Like I say, you can test it with a number 18 wire to see if you have a problem. I would suggest that you uh, mark the position and the color of the wire before you start taking any of these pins out. Uh, that way you can put them back in the right place. If you put them in the wrong place, you're going to have a disaster on your hands. <laughs> you don't want that. So to get this back in there, just simply reinsert it. And this little tab on the end that we showed you. A little lever on the end. Wherever it's at. That's your release mechanism right there. Anyway, I'm showing you this so that you are fully armed in case you have problems with this connector. Now the problems I think <clears throat> that I'm having is on the board because I, I sprayed the connector down real good with some contact cleaner in the automobile. Um, I think the problems I'm having is actually on the board itself. I actually have two of these clusters. I have the original one, which was giving problem, the same problem with the uh, with the brake light, and I also purchased another one off of eBay, which is an exact uh, model. It's uh, precisely the same, down to the last part. And uh, I used one to put on the bench to experiment with, and. Uh, the one in the vehicle is the one that's going to stay in there, the one, the original one. <clears throat> the reason is because the original one had a certain number of miles on it, and if you put a different cluster in there, you'll have a different mileage uh, because that's contained somewhere in the cluster, and you don't want to screw up your automobile like that. Um, uh, if you have programming problems, you have to take it to Ford or somewhere to get them to... Uh, flash the memories or whatever they have to do. I'm not sure exactly how they do it. I don't have the equipment to do it, so uh, I don't want you to get involved with something over your head. Um, I don't think there's anything you can swap out uh, inside that cluster. It just has to be uh, done software-wise uh, at the Ford dealership that has the tools to do it. Now, if your cluster is real bad, you can send it off to one of these repair services uh, that you see online and they'll solder a bunch of connections maybe put in some new bulbs um, motors if it needs the new motors in it and uh, uh, that way you can get your cluster back in order but as I say uh, it probably has to do with soldering on the pins and I'll show you something about that now Alright, so this is the actual cluster board that uh, came out of the, uh, uh, the original board that came out of the vehicle. And uh, it had the same problem with the brake light. Uh, a lot of times these resistors, uh, these surface mounted resistors located in this area will contribute to that problem. Also, it is possible that... Uh, you have some uh, soldering concerns on the connectors right here. So don't just grab a soldering iron and start soldering on these things. You'll make a god-awful mess out of it. You're going to have to have flux. You can't do it without flux. Uh, and you have to have the right soldering equipment else you'll start burning stuff up. Now these surface mount parts these, these, uh, these don't go through the board. They just they're just sorted right on the top of the board to a little pad, a print circuit pad. So if you heat them up too much, uh, it's going to float completely off the pad. Uh, you can't put a lot of heat on it. Uh, watch the watch the uh, repair people on YouTube and see how they do it. Now, in order to look at these boards completely, 
I went and purchased myself a one of these $500 microscopes <laughs> so that I can do surface mount parts the SMD parts these cost a little over $500 uh, they're worth their weight in gold for doing uh, SMD type work I do not intend to start repairing clusters for people uh, this is my own personal project and uh, I intend to fix it one way or the other and since I do have the soldering equipment I will touch up all the pins and all of these large resistors right here um, I've watched a lot of the videos and I never see these guys change out uh, any of these little solid state devices like this I never see them change those things out but they can go bad it uh, whatever is wrong with this one not only the brake light comes on inadvertently also it uh, it will bring the dome lights on and if the dome lights come on during the night uh, it'll run the battery down and I'm having that problem also and I think it comes off the cluster the replacement cluster that I purchased does not allow the uh, dome lights to come on inadvertently after they time out they're 30 seconds when you close the door the dome light should go out and stay out all night but with with this cluster installed the dome lights can come on and uh, and they'll stay on for a long time and eventually either today or tomorrow the battery will be totally flat so lots of things to watch uh, you'll see reports of these problems with other people in their uh, in their YouTube videos also okay well that's my story and I'm sticking to it uh, good luck with your problems uh, I hope you don't have the problems that I'm having but if you do do a lot of research uh, don't go head over heels with your soldering iron like I say you can destroy a lot of stuff with a soldering iron a little bit too much temperature and you've uh, you've ruined the board all right thanks for watching and any comments uh, they're always welcome bye bye